Planning Commission. Um, good evening, everyone. Commissioners, I'm going to change up the schedule, um, the agenda a bit, and we are going to hear the open hearing for the petition for Bruce Bodler at the end. So we'll go ahead and we will hear the other two um, public hearings ahead of that. And I also um, would like to, have we had a chance to review the minutes from September's commission meeting? If you've had an opportunity yes, to. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, I'm, let's do a roll call first. I'm sorry. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll do a roll call for commissioner members. We will start with um, Commissioner Jay Lutz. Here. Commissioner Andrew Klenner. Here. Commissioner Brad Lindbergh. Here. Commissioner Jana Norman. Here. Commissioner Aaron Stewart. Here. Commissioner Karam Salas Ramirez. Here. Is Commissioner Rita, has she logged into the Zoom meeting? Uh, she tried and was not able to get in. Okay, okay, so we'll wait on her. Okay, so then we'll go ahead and we'll look at the minutes from last month's meeting. If everyone has had an opportunity to review those, do we have a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. A motion's been made by Commissioner Lutz, seconded by Commissioner Klenner. I'll go ahead and I'll do a roll call for vote. Commissioner Lutz? Aye. Commissioner Klenner? Aye. Commissioner Lindbergh? Aye. Commissioner Norman? Aye. Commissioner Stewart? Aye. Commissioner Salas Ramirez? Aye. With a unanimous decision of aye, motion carries. So we'll start out tonight's meeting with our first open public hearing to consider a petition from Nicholas Yearhart at 4006 West Oakland Avenue for a variance from city section code 11.01 .01, limited the total aggregate area of all accessory structures for properties over one acre in R1 residential district. Holly, do you wanna take, start that? Yes. Um, it looks like Commissioner, Commissioner Schrock was able to join us. Okay. Um, so as noted, uh, the petitioner is Nicholas Yearhart, 4006 Oakland Avenue West, Austin, Minnesota. Um, he owns a parcel that is zoned R1 single family residential. Um, somebody um, on the Zoom call needs to mute, I think. Did everyone mute? Yeah, I can. <laughs> okay, hang on. I'll get in there. <laughs> oh, let's see. I think we're okay. Back here. Okay, the surrounding zoning actually is our, there's one air in there, so R1 residential. Actually, no, that's correct. To the south, there is uh, light industrial. Forgot my mouse, so I'm kind of slow here. Uh, the petitioner is requesting an 800 square foot variance from our city code section 11.01 .01, subdivision one, limiting the total aggregate area of all accessory structures to 1,584 square feet for parcels exceeding one acre. The variance request is for the construction of a 2,400 square foot shed in addition, in addition to an existing shed, existing uh, detached accessory structure. The property in question is approximately 3.4 acres. Um, it's unusually large for uh, the city of Austin. Um, our minimum lot uh, size requirement is 6,000 square feet. Um, with this proposed 2,400 square foot addition, 
the total lot coverage with structures, including the residents, would be approximately 4%. Um, we do allow up to 40% lot coverage. The um, square footage of the existing dwellings in the proposed shed are noted below on your materials. Uh, the total would be 6,112 square feet. Um, the Planning Commission oops, and City Council, let's see we've got someone else coming in here. Um, need to address the following statutory requirements for granting a variance. One, they sh you should consider whether the variance is in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the zoning code, that the variance is consistent with the comprehensive plan, that the applicant has established that there are practical difficulties in complying with the provision, and that the property owner poses to use the pro proposes to use the property in a reasonable manner not permitted by the provision. That would include that the plight of the landowner is due to circumstances unique to the property not created by the landowner. The variance will not permit any use that is not allowed in the zoning district where the affected land is located and that the variance will not alter the essential character of the surrounding area. And uh, let's see, I'm gonna bring up the uh, GIS map here for a minute. All right, so in the past, we have gotten some complaints about some of the outdoor storage at this particular location. And so that was uh, a little bit of a driver um, for this particular request. Um, you know, being a more rural property, again, the parcel is quite large um, compared to what we would normally see as a city lot, you know, with accessory structures. Um, do you have any questions uh, in addition to what I presented to you so far? Did we get any feedback from neighbors for the mailing? Um, this went to four neighbors. Let me double check. And no, we did not get any calls okay. from any of the neighbors. I drove out and looked at the property and uh, in the aerial photo that's in the packet, he's placing the building, if that's where he's putting it, is behind the existing fairly large accessory building that's already there. It's tucked in the back of the lot there, kind of out of sight. So it's aesthetically, I don't think it takes away from the character of the area. My own personal preference as a neighbor would be I'd rather see that building than all the junk that's piled around all the way the place. I'd rather see all that stuff inside the building than out on the lot. So 
I didn't think from that standpoint it was an issue. My concern was same as Andy's, whether or not any of the neighbors had responded. Yeah, I should be able to get that pulled up here. Yeah, this is where. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, this is showing the location, but this is flipped from the north is on the. Well, that's just flipped, so the south is on the top. Is there a neighbor on the north side of this new proposed building that has any issues? Uh, it's just um, field, actually. Yeah, the north side is just open, empty land. Yeah, it's agricultural to the north. There's some resonances. Yeah, I don't and, see any issue with this. I, th I think it's a, um, you won't even see it from the road. No. The only place you see it, I think it makes Brad, is from the west, that gravel road on the west side there. Yeah, there's some residences across the street. But I'm guessing okay. they're probably the same people that I'm not, I don't know, anonymous, we always do anonymous, but I, if people are complaining, you know, I'm thinking it's more about what's outside than what would be inside. I've not had any complaints about the structure on the parcel. It's more the, you know, the motor vehicles, some recreational vehicles, not always, not always the ones in the back, but more in the front. If he temporary, he has temporarily stored some in the front that got noticed and complaints so i think his his hope is to keep some of those things inside well, i think it's in a good spot behind the other building i drove past it also so i think i mean looking at it i mean it's probably in the best spot that it could be and hopeful that he would keep some of his items in there maybe that others had complained about in the past. So I wouldn't see a problem with it. And the surrounding properties, um, zoned residential and light industrial, um, is that because they were annexed in? Yeah, this, this area was annexed in, I don't know, within the last 10 years, maybe less. Okay. Actually, it might be less. The idea. Six or seven. Okay. The idea is that those would be rezoned um, agricultural or light industrial, whatever is appropriate for the use. Well, I um, think, in, you know, in conformance with. I don't know all the county. I was going to say. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. I was going to say, you know, in, in conformance with the, the, um, the plan, the comprehensive plan. Our comprehensive plan, it's, it's, uh, Residential, R1 residential in that area, single family. Will it stay that way is my question. Would it stay that way? Um, yeah. More than likely, yes. There are a lot of residences in that area. I mean, it could potentially be subdivided um, to create more parcels and maybe more housing if that, you know, became, uh, you know, if that was an area of interest to maybe a developer. Um, Got it. The issue for the annexation was that there were failing septic systems in that area, and some of the property owners were not able to replace their septic systems. And so it was either, you know, uh, annex into the city and get city sewer, or actually, I think we just finished the project out there um, to bring sewer, sewer to them. But yeah, I mean, initially when the property was in the county, I believe the county has kind of an, uh, like has a minimum that's larger than what the city would require. So some of these parcels I think are larger, I believe are larger because they are required to be when they're, um, when they're first developed as single family residences in the townships and county.
Does anybody else have any other questions? Is this a recommendation, Holly? Yes, this, all of the items tonight are recommendations to council. Okay. I will make a motion to recommend to council to approve the request for the 2,400 square foot building addition, accessory building. I would second that. Okay. A motion has been made by Commissioner Lutz and seconded by Commissioner Lindbergh to recommend to council uh, the approval of the 24 um, square foot shed um, at 4006 West Oakland Avenue. We'll go ahead and take a roll vote, starting with Commissioner Lutz. Aye. Commissioner Klenner. Aye. Commissioner Lindbergh. Aye. Commissioner Norman. Aye. Commissioner Schrock. Aye. Commissioner Stewart. Aye. Commissioner Salas Ramirez. Aye. Okay. So with the unanimous decision of aye, motion carries. Next on our agenda is an open public hearing to consider a petition from Mill on Main LLC at 704 First Drive Northwest for a variance from city code sections 11.70 subdivision one off street parking requirements and 11.41 subdivision five height limitations in a B2 district. Holly, can you give us a background on that? Yes, um, there are essentially two items here. We'll deal with them separately, although they overlap. It's, they're both referencing the same project. Um, the petitioners are um, proposing a project at the former YMCA site at 704 First Drive Northwest. Um, that would be a new 92 unit pro apartment project. Um, the property uh, proposes to have 153 parking stalls, which is 54 less than what we currently require. Um, uh, 207, which is 2.25 spaces for each dwelling unit. The petitioner proposes 1.66 spaces per dwelling unit. Um, and uh, it's in the future, we've had a lot of these um, appeals with regard to multifamily housing. And we are proposing in our future code update to, to um, require 1.5 spaces per dwelling unit. We just have not gotten to the point of adopting anything new yet. Okay, so our current ordinance does allow parking appeal uh, parking appeals um, to the Planning Commission and Board of Adjustment and Appeals, which is a, the City Council. Um, the proposed parking would be 74% of what's currently required. Um, we have, I have some additional documents that have been provided by the uh, project proposer, uh, the developer. I see that they have a couple of representatives here on our Zoom call as well, um, if there are any questions. Um, just as in the last uh, item, the uh, council should consider whether the variance is in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the zoning code. Uh, that is a consistent with our comprehensive plan that the applicant has established that there are practical difficulties in complying with the provision and that the property owner proposes to use the property in a reasonable manner, not permitted by the provision, um, that it's not due to circumstances or it's due to circumstances unique to the property. Um, the variance will not permit any use that is not allowed where they in the district where the affected land is located and will not alter the essential character of the surrounding area. Um, I'm just going to go to pull up some more information here. I have a question for the project representatives. Okay. Is he here tonight or is he online or? Yeah, I'm not sure who they have two people. Uh, why don't you go ahead and ask, ask, this ask is the, the question? This is the former YMCA property. So when it was the Y, there was a second parking lot area across the street. Was that property not part of the sale in this?
It, it is part of the deal. Um, sorry, I'll hop in here, Holly. Um, however, um, we want this project to stand on its own so that we have flexibility for a future phase at that location. Um, so we're just, just making sure that we do it right from the beginning here. Um, in our experience, it, um, and pretty much any project that we do recently, we've been at 1.5 or a little lower than 1.5 parking spaces per unit. Um, the reality is in a lot of these buildings now compared to when these um, parking requirements were written um, back then, apartments consisted of um, a lot more two bedroom type units, even three bed. And the reality is today is um, the greatest count of units is in the studio and one bed um, units, which are typically a, a one, maybe a one and a half car type unit. Um, and then you have about 25% or so of two bed type units that might be two car type units. So our experience when we're above like or right around a 1.5 parking ratio, um, we have more than enough uh, parking for on, on one specific site. Can you can you give us a, your name as well? Oh, sorry, Nathan Stencil, uh, developer. Thank you. So for now, that property is just going to be kept the way it is with the asphalt on it and the parking that's there. Yep. So we will use it for for overflow parking um, in hopes of doing a future phase two type project on that site. Uh, are, you, are you proposing, Nathan, to uh, develop the property with, with another building? Yeah, we sure hope so. Um, that would be the goal, the long-term goal for the site. And I believe um, in our agreement, um, which we may have to modify, Holly, is our, or I guess everybody, is the fact that there is um, a timeline on the development of the property. So in the event that... Um, we did not move forward with, with the development of it. Um, <clears throat> I believe it reads that the property would go back to the, the Port Authority. Um, I'd have to, I don't have that in front of me, but our ultimate goal here is to complete this project, have it be successful and move forward with a, another building um, complementing it across the street. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do any commissioners have any other questions? It is a recommendation to council. Does anybody want to see the site online? I can pull it up. That would be helpful. Yeah, I'll see if I can. All right, not sure why it's blue, but okay. All right, I'm kind of hovering over it right now. Love it. Okay. So this is the existing YMCA here now, and this is the parking across the street, and this is the parking to the south. And then uh, we do have some, we do have some uh, building plans included in your packet as well. If you had a chance to look at those. Well, if we don't have any other questions, 
Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll motion to approve. I would second that. Um, can you give me a little more detail? So is this a motion to approve? I'll motion to approve the variance from the required 207 parking spaces to 100 and can't quite see it there. 153. 153. Thank you. Commissioner Lindbergh, is that what you are also um, seconding? Yes, I am. Okay. A motion has been made and seconded to recommend approval of a variance from the required 207 parking spaces to 153 parking spaces taking into consideration the unique characteristics of the property consistency with a comprehensive plan. We'll go ahead and we'll do a roll call vote, starting with Commissioner Lutz. Aye. Commissioner Klenner. Aye. Commissioner Lindbergh. Aye. Commissioner Norman. I'll have to abstain. Commissioner Schrock. Aye. Commissioner Stewart. Aye. Commissioner Salas Ramirez. Aye. With a majority vote of aye, motion carries. And then we want to discuss the second portion of, of their hearing. Yes. Um, so this piece will. Um, uh, will uh, address the uh, the height variance request. The um, property is zoned B2. Um, it's, uh, or yeah, B2. I'm not sure why I have single family residents on here, but that's community business. Um, to the north is uh, multifamily residential and commercial, both R2 and B2 districts. To the south is commercial B3 district, which is our downtown business district. Um, to the east is the mill pond and um, past the mill pond industrial. And then uh, to the west is multifamily residential, our two district. Um, the petitioner has requested a variance uh, in limiting the maximum height uh, from our ordinance, limiting the maximum height in a B2 district to three stories or 45 feet. Um, so yeah, it's interesting that there's different kinds of zoning in that area. And, yet we still have um, uh, we have a five story we have two four story buildings right next to that existing Y and then an eight story building just one building up from that as well. Um, so this project proposes a five story building including a partially very lower level parking garage that walks out to the east. The proposed height is 45 feet from the first floor on the west and 55 feet eight inches from the lower level on the east. Um, the again, the neighboring R2 districts to the west and north would allow a height up to 80 feet for a similar size lot. The lot is approximately two acres, and the proposed zoning code update would allow the same heights in B2 as in R2 to facilitate apartments and multifamily projects. Um, the two closest neighbors are the Cedars and the uh, I think it's I think it's called uh, well, it's their condos. It's like Austin Lane condos or something like that, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Austin Lanes. Yeah, Austin Lanes, thank you. So the same uh, criteria applies in this instance as the other two previous, um, that the variance is in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the zoning code, consistent with the comprehensive plan, um, that the applicant has established that there are practical difficulties in complying um, and that the plight that the plight of the landowners due to circumstances unique of the, to the property, um, not created by the landowner, that the variance will not permit any use that is not allowed in the zoning district where the affected land is located, and that the variance will not alter the essential character of the surrounding area. So there were civil plans again included with this um, packet. Do you have any questions? I'm trying to. 
with all the variation between the building heights and in the in the local area, can you comment on direct directionally what what we're trying to get to in terms of building height? In terms of can can you say that again? With with all the vari variation in building heights that we see uh, in that local area, which direction are we trying to go in with? approving uh, taller buildings or, or shorter buildings in our zoning My code question. update we are um, going taller um, higher density is generally uh, more valued with regard to infrastructure um, in that area there are existing multifamily or multi-unit uh, structures so we expect them to stay we want them to stay um, so this particular project would not be out of place with the existing projects. Great, thank you. That answers my question. Yeah, I don't recall that we addressed. Do we have Do we have a, a street plan, view of this property? Yeah, it's um, here. I'll pull it up again. It's the, the old YMCA. It's the same same property that we just talked about. It's just that this is a separate issue, the height versus the yeah, Holly. Parking. My question goes to do do we have a proposed uh, view of the of the new building? Oh, the not, not yeah. The we there know. were some items. No, we don't. Ha no, we don't have is a drawing. It, we don't have a street view of this no. proposed building. No, we don't. But my understanding would be the west side would meet the would current height. Correct. But the east side is the one that's in question. Right. Right. The east side would be about 10 feet higher. Right. Almost 12, 10, almost 11 feet higher than what's what the min, uh, maximum height is allowed. And is it actually higher or is it just because the property drops off on that side? I'm not sure. Maybe. I think it slopes. Yeah, I'm not sure. Do you um, do any of the? So the, the I don't. I'm I'm just gonna hop in here, Nate Stencil again, um, and maybe Trevor or Zach if I'm wrong in this. But um, so it's a a walk out towards the east, uh, meaning it starts at grade on First Avenue, and then um, everything goes down towards um, Main Street. So the when you look at it from Main Street, the first level would be the underground parking garage and pretty fully exposed. And then you'd have four stories of wood frame construction above that, um, which puts you at about 50 or 53 feet or so. Um, but from the front side, the parking structure is underground and then you have four levels of framing, which puts you under the, uh, the restricted height. Um, so it's really just a function of, um, you know, the way the, the lot lays and, and designing it has a walkout with the uh, underground parking being fully exposed to the east and not exposed to the west, um, which is really the, the main reason for needing that variance. Okay, thank you. So, so Nathan, the underground is is a misnomer it's above ground actually well it's about so i think in in uh i don't know how your guys is written but um probably playing it a little safe here but in some communities they they define a level has so if the parking garage was say 50 percent um a total of 50 percent of it was below grade um, it wouldn't be classified as a story. Um, in this case, I believe that greater than 50% of our lower, lo lower level parking is exposed, which would classify it as a level. So again, from the main street side, it would appear to be a five story building. From the First Avenue side, um, First Drive side, side, it is a four story building. Um, so uh, the answer to your question is about half of it 
is underground parking. The other half is exposed due to the elevation drop in the lot from west to east. Thank you. Yep. Does anyone else have any other questions? If we do not, does, would anyone like to make a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the um, height variance for this building. Second. A motion's been made by Commissioner Lindbergh and seconded by Commissioner Clennon to approve the height variance of the proposed building. We'll go ahead and we'll take a roll call vote, starting with Commissioner Lutz. Aye. Commissioner Klenner. Aye. Commissioner Lindbergh. Aye. Commissioner Norman. I'll have to abstain. Commissioner Schrock. Aye. Commissioner Stewart. Aye. Commissioner Salas Ramirez. Aye. With the majority vote of aye, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. If you if your matter is already completed, you don't have to stay and watch the rest of the meeting. Although you're welcome to if you like. Okay. So our uh, our last agenda item is the public hearing getting to that to consider a petition from Bruce Bodler to approve a rezone of his property at 1404 Street Northwest from an R1 residential district to a combination of B2 community business district and an RO multifamily resident office district to accommodate development. Holly, if you'd like to get us started. Yeah, um, so as noted, this property is owned by Bruce Bodler and his wife uh, from Phoenix, Arizona. The location of the property is 1404th Street Northeast. Um, the petitioner, again, is requesting to rezone the property. Um, it consists of two parcels, parcel A and B. Are currently, are currently zoned R1 single family. The petitioner wishes to rezone parcel A to RO residential office and parcel B to B2 community business. And the future land use plan is proposed to be amended from residential low densi density to mixed use. The present land use, there is no use right now. The house is vacant and somewhat dilapidated. The uh, surrounding uses to the south and the east are R1 single family residential districts and the north and west there is uh, is B2 commercial. The reason for this request is that the, uh, the petitioner uh, wishes to accommodate redevelopment of the property. Um, the, I'll talk about the parcel A first which is proposed to be rezoned to RO multifamily. Permitted uses in the RO multifamily office district are anything permitted in the R1 and R2 districts, which is basically single family and multifamily. Also the cultural um, colleges and academic instruction, uh, mortuary funeral home uh, with some uh, restrictions, offices, business or professional offices. Studios, um, art, television, radio, music, and dance, or conservatories, uh, clubs, um, fraternities, lodges, and meeting places for other organizations, but does not include like a retail type establishment. Um, antennas and towers, these have been changed in our upcoming ordinance, but for the meantime, that's still allowed. Um, sub, uh, conditional uses would allow um, hotels, motels, tourist homes, bed and breakfast, 
Um, just keep in mind that in an R2 dist or an RO district, um, uh, the uh, well, actually, let me go down here. Um, other conditional uses are uh, research facilities, home occupations. Again, antennas and towers, um, normal accessory structures to a primary structure, um, <clears throat> services uh, if they're located within the, uh, the building, um, like, a, like a hotel, for instance. The service would not be able to be on its own. It would have to be part of the hotel. Um, and then for parcel B, community business district, general uh, permitted uses would be small retail establishments uh, under 70,000 square feet, personal services and business services, uh, post offices, um, restaurants, um, bakery, catering, um, minor fabrication and repair, like a appliance repair shop, uh, decorating shop, um, let's see what else, drive-in uses, banks, uh, financial institutions. There are requirements for screening in those instances. Um, home businesses, transient accommodations. Just double checking here. Uh, commercial recreation, uh, golfing, um, swimming pools, skating rinks, uh, animal hospitals, veterinary clinics. Um, Automotive is not allowed without a conditional use. Residential, anything that's allowed in the R1, R2, and RO districts. Um, conditional uses, um, we have some kind of dated language here as in the others, uh, bottling, uh, limited manufacturing. Um, uh, these are, again, conditional, conditional uses. Uh, automotive uh, and the businesses would be uh, take place wholly, uh, conducted wholly within a completely enclosed building, except for certain sales. Um, would require non-objectionable uses, um, nothing that would uh, have any kind of nuisance uh, impact, and then um, would allow new merchandise um, <clears throat> under certain circumstances. And then this just has the um, setback requirements, the um, maximum lot coverage in a B2 district is, well, we require 20% open space, I guess, is the um, controlling factor there. The Planning Commission and Council <laughs> should consider the following. Um, whether the should consider the consistency of the proposed zoning with the goals, policies, and future land use map of the comprehensive plan. In this instance, the comprehensive plan would be amended from uh, low density, suburban low density residential neighborhood to mixed use. The definition for suburban low density is identifies housing with densities that generally, generally range from two to four units per acre. Um, would pre be predominantly single family 
with the potential for some twin homes and other low density detach or attached homes. Um, two to five units per acre. The mixed use would be um, identifying areas intended to provide a mix of commercial, office, residential, public, institutional related uses in a walkable human scale environment. Areas may include a mix of retail and service, commercial, office, lodging, public, institutional, higher density, residential, park, and recreational uses. Mix of uses can be integrated either vertically or horizontally. Mixed use areas are currently found in downtown Austin as well as within the 18th Avenue corridor. Um, the Back to the other considerations for rezoning. The compatible, you should consider the com compatibility of the site with the uses permitted in the proposed zoning district. Um, the compatibility, whoops, too far. The compatibility of all the potential uses allowed in the proposed zoning district with the surrounding uses and zoning in terms of land suitability, impacts on the environment, density, nature of use, and traffic impacts, aesthetics, infrastructure, and potential influence on property values. The capacity of existing infrastructure and services sufficient to accommodate the use, uses permitted in the requested district without compromising the health, safety, and welfare of the residents. Whether the uses permitted in the pro proposed zoning district will cause detrimental environmental impacts, including but not limited to excessive stormwater runoff, water pollution, air pollution, noise pollution, excessive nighttime lighting, or other environmental harm. The boundaries of the requested zoning district are sufficient to meet the dimensional regulations for the proposed zoning district. The ability of the applicant to satisfy any requirements um, applicable to the specific use imposed pursuant to zoning and land use regulation. I actually didn't have anything additional attached here. Uh, at least not from the comprehensive plan. Uh, that was just something that I just read out of the comp plan. This is the survey done by the property owner showing the, we don't oh, see here, hang on. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Um, this was the survey done showing the split of the two parcels. Um, this is the Hardee's property to the north. And the just trying to pull it down. This is where the, the housing starts here to the south. And I can pull this up on a mapping here. Pretty close. There we go. Gotta put it in the middle here. Oops. All right. Um, so, just some additional information. We sent out notices to 55 properties. I specifically spoke to three individuals who are neighbors, very close neighbors. Um, I spoke to Hanson Moser, Mosher, or Moser, Mosher, uh, and Lembrick. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and then I understand that the everybody here right now is here for this particular item, and did all. Is there anybody who didn't get a notice? Okay. You did not get a notice? Oh, you got one. Okay. So one, two. So about 14 or 15 people out of the list, it looks like. We miss and we're missing two for that were here earlier. Okay. So just to kind of give you an idea of how many people have responded, um, the uh, 
the earlier project we have, we didn't mention it, but 41 notices went out to that, and I didn't get any responses on that one. Um, do you have any questions right now, or do you want to open it up? Let's open it up for discussion. Okay. Hey, Holly, before we open it up, uh, uh, I mean, to me, Holly went through that whole list of criteria that we have to look at for this issue. And the one that jumps out at me is the traffic impact more than anything else in this particular issue. So I realize all these properties that surround this area are affected by this, but a lot of these properties have access on 2nd Street, 3rd Street, and 12th Place to get in and out of the neighborhood a different way. I'm particularly interested in hearing from the Mosier, Heigl, McEdward, and Smith properties because they actually live on 4th Street and their driveways are on 4th Street. The only way they can get in and out of their homes by car is on 4th Street. So those are the properties, I'm just speaking for myself, not the rest of the commissioners, but those are the properties I'm most interested in hearing from. I, should, I just wanted to throw all that out there. I should note too that there is an existing access to the property, um, but it was a single family residence initially or still is so there wasn't a lot of traffic going in and out of there other than the family which would be similar to the other residences to the south the um we do have an agreement that there won't be additional ingress egress to that lot other than the one that's there right other than the one that's is that existing. the one that's even with is it 13th avenue yes yep okay in holly was that part of a traffic study or what was the reason no behind? uh but there have been lots of traffic studies and that was something that our city engineer requested before okay. we went ahead with the property split so this was one parcel okay. and as part of the property split that was a condition uh to approving it okay and i should note as well as some of the neighbors who've gotten notice the there are um, there's a representative of the property owner here, um, Charlie Favre, who's a realtor, and um, uh, an individual. I guess I can let you describe yourself, however you want. Rob Steppes. Okay, just um, somebody who is working with Mr. Favre on project. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's hear from them um, first. Okay. If you'd like to go ahead and. Hello. Hi. I'm Rob Steffes. I uh, I represent, I guess the the small property on the northeast corner would be the one that we're looking to rezone to the B2. So I would represent um, the business that I intend to and propose to put in to that location. So the, the one you were speaking of originally was the other parcel, parcel A. And so I'm going to be speaking to parcel B. I guess that's, I just want to be clear on that. So. So um, we're looking to pr proposing to bring in a scooters coffee kiosk. And a kiosk is essentially a, a drive-through only business. There would be no you know, in-store in seating of that nature. It's a fairly small structure. So it's 600 square feet uh, is the size of the structure. And again, it, it'll be, it'll be drive-through only. So. Um, the business hours that we have typically for this type of business is around 6 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. We do employ about 15 people. We've got a manager, an assistant manager, baristas, so a total of about 15 at, at, uh, uh, for this business. Um, Scooter's Coffee is a, is, a, is a Midwestern franchise that was started in Omaha, Nebraska. It's really got the strong Midwestern values and that's what really we you know I have a partner in this business that drew us to this this type of uh, this type of business and so um, they're really expanding in the Midwest the upper Midwest all the way down to Texas right now currently uh, we do have 10 stores under 
our business umbrella currently. And so, so we've been very successful in, in managing and running this business. Um, the type of products that they do sell are, you know, you're basically coffee, coffee related products, espresso drinks, lattes, teas, fruit smoothies. And then all of the food products are made from scratch in Omaha, Nebraska, and uh, are essentially uh, include things like muffins, pastries, oatmeal, breakfast burritos, uh, breakfast sandwiches. So I think you guys are familiar with the type of products, but no, no, pro no food products are prepared, you know, in, inside the facility there. So. Um, so that, that, that's the business, uh, you know, the brand promise is amazing people, amazing drinks served amazingly fast. And, uh, you know, we do want to be cognizant of, of being a good neighbor. Uh, we'll definitely work with neighbors and work with the city and be cooperative on any, anything needed to, uh, for any minimum requirements, um, and those types of things. I know trees are always important. Um, there are some, some very large trees there. I, I would expect that they would need to be reviewed and to make sure that they're healthy. And typically trees of that age, you know, start to become to the end of their life and could be, you know, could potentially um, be hazardous, but uh, um, certainly welcome. Uh, I, I truly enjoy lots of landscaping trees and things like that. To, and it's really a requirement of Scooter's Coffee uh, from the corporate to make these, these, these buildings look uh, extremely, you know, pleasing and from the road. and and provide that, that type of vegetation. So um, I do have some, some packets, you know, with some pictures of what the building would look like and how it would lay out in the property if, if you guys would like to, to have those or I would hand them out. So if you guys are interested. What was one of the things that you liked about this location? Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really like being close to the rooftops, um, the, the homes. Um, and that's, that's being on the south side of the interstate is what we like. And there's already some retail in the area uh, at this exit to the interstate. And so um, being, you know, having that access uh, for, for people to, to drive up to the, the area and, and get to it quickly and, and close to the rooftops, it, it does, you know, feel like other, other parts of the city can be, you know, there's 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 you know other places too but that's that's part of the reason and and there's already a a pretty good traffic count on that road as well so it's a it's a great means of getting from the south side of the interstate where the majority of the rooftops are to you know the other big box retail area um and it seems like i do have a friend that lives in in austin and, and the interstate is used to you uh, know, a lot of cases to get from point A to point B to, to on and exit the, th the several different exits there. So it, it's, it's just a, a good, a good traffic location, but, but also close to rooftops. So that's, that's part of the reason that we're looking at this lot. And I, I do think it would be, you know, good to, uh, it, it's time to do something with the house that's, that's currently there, that's sitting empty. And, um, we're here to, do something with that so do you have a site drawing that shows where the ingress and egress would be to uh, fourth street yes i do can i bring those up to you do so we have a way to see those uh, on that hang on let me see if i can i'm not sure about the, i don't know if we can kick this off the elmo or let's see Oh, he couldn't. Okay. It might not work with our Zoom setup. You might have to just walk it around. Okay. I'll just check. hand a few out here. Oh, maybe. I'll leave. Oh. So, so parcel B would have separate egress and ingress driveways from parcel A. Is that what we're saying, Holly? Thank you. Um, you mentioned the agreement earlier that there would only be the existing one. Yeah, it wouldn't look like this. That it would just be the. I I can speak to that. Okay. Um, a bit because when uh, city engineer raised the issue of controlling access to the site uh, in order to make sure the traffic on Fourth Street was was safe and acceptable after after this development uh, what he 
said would make that work is if all access to both parcel A and parcel B to and from 4th Street occurred directly across from the existing a avenue. So right essentially where the current driveway access is, but straight across to create, you know, a, a, a perpendicular or, or perfect, you know, intersection. With 13th Avenue. With 13th Avenue and 4th Street. So what will have to happen is that the traffic pattern from parcel B will have to come down through parcel A to get to that, that access point in coming and going. And so there is a, there is a design drawing, perhaps those who are here have seen it, uh, that sort of shows how that would, would uh, work. Now, there is an accommodation of a right turn only exit point from parcel B on to 4th Street. But that's exit only, right turn only, again, to minimize the impact of the that's traffic. The, the north side driveway then. Yep. Okay. Yep, leaving from that location. So there's going to be no traffic stopping to turn in or anyone waning on parcel B to turn left and travel south on 4th Street because that would create additional traffic bottlenecks if it's all in and out directly across from the avenue, then that'll minimize those interactions or conflicts because they'll be at a actual intersection. That's what city engineers thoughts were behind limiting the access point primarily to parcel A. So uh, let me ask a question when it comes to clientele. Are, are you anticipating this to be local people that are going to uh, come to your uh, coffee shop? Or are we talking about people coming off of Interstate 90 to enjoy your, your coffee and, and, and assorted sandwiches and whatever? Um, I would expect, uh, you know, 75 to 80% of the people to be, you know, from the local Austin uh, market and uh, but just being close to the interstate um, you know I, I suppose we would get some traffic off of that as well um, you know just by nature of being being adjacent to the interstate but our, our target market is certainly uh, the people that live and work in, within the city of, of Austin Thank you. Are you considering any other locations besides this, or is this kind of the preferred? Uh, this would definitely be our preferred location. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? Any commissioners have any other questions for him? Can we have Charlie come up and talk about the other portion? Um, Thank you. That is before us. Good evening, I'm Charlie Fauver, uh, and uh, thank you for your time this evening. Uh, the, uh, as, as was brought forward to you, and the question that I heard asked about the, ex, ex, the uh, access to the property, the access to both parcels of the property would be on the access directly from 13th directly across from 13th, both parcels. Uh, the, the, uh, the parcel that is left, the, uh, the balance of the property, we, we would consider, we are, we are considering the fact that we would probably end up de developing that into maybe a small office building 
at the at the intersection of that 13th entrance and uh, 4th Street, uh, a one-story uh, probably less than 2,000 square foot or 2,000 square foot area uh, of a, a building at that point. The balance of that would be, or the balance of the property, we would anticipate that we would develop that into a, uh, uh, a, a group of townhomes, uh, probably six, maybe seven townhomes that could fit in there. And, uh, and they would be uh, developed under a condominium style or a, uh, what they what they call a, uh, um, a, a common interest community style uh, with a, starting with a single ownership allowing them the ability to be either sold as an individual unit or rented as uh, yeah, market rate rental rental units. Um, I think that this uh, this develops this piece of property in a very soft way as far as uh, as impact to the neighbors. The uh, uh, the neighborhood basically would stay where it is the residential neighborhood would stay residential. The, the northwest corner where Scooters is going to be would, uh, would be the commercial. And it's a very, uh, a very compatible commercial. It's not something that, that, uh, that should create a lot of problem to anyone. Uh, hours is not into the middle of the night or anything. The uh, uh, it it certainly allows a transition from the commercial that is across the street and the commercial Hardee's and down and allows us to to create a buffer so that everybody is buffered in a manner that uh, that would make a very easy transition in there. Um, hey, I guess that's, uh, do you have questions? Um, I do. Go ahead. Um, looking at kind of where you're um, suggesting that the office building would be proposed, it looks like there's a storm sewer easement that is correct. That's in that area. How would that be? Is that something that a, a structure can be built there? Maybe this is more of a question for Holly. Would there be issues or concerns with that? Yes, that I can. I can. I can speak to that. The the, uh, the storm sewer leaves a strip of land in between there, and I, I believe it's forty. Uh, there's, there's 67 feet minus 10 feet, so 57 feet minus a, an eight and a half foot easement. So that, that brings it down to 48 and a half feet of land. And then when you have a setback, you leave a, it leaves a strip of land in there that is a buildable area that is approximately 42 feet wide, 40 or 42 feet wide. Uh, depending on the uh, on the design of the building, of course, and and of course, then we have to uh, take into consideration parking. Parking can be done on top of that storm sewer area. We can't build buildings on top of the storm sewer area, and so the the area where the storm sewer is uh, is going to have to be parking and access. 
the strip of land that's in between will have to be what we would build and and that could be built into some townhouse or perhaps a small office building in that area uh, we we need to we need to create a need for it um, the need for the town for, for for residential is definitely there I, we can we can handle that but the the uh, corner right on 4th Street and and uh, 13th Avenue um, really is not conducive to putting in residential that should have a buffer we have the buffer that uh, that creates a good buffer from from the residential that's there from the residential that we would put in there from the commercial that is there from the commercial across the street thank you so for these townhomes what would the traffic access be well we would we would probably develop the uh, third street and bring it up yeah third third street and and bring a loop of some sort up there that would uh, that would tie into that access that is off the end of 13th Avenue uh, that uh, that would allow that to to be there without without creating a lot of traffic that would come through there It'd probably be some one ways and so on. Okay, thank you. Do any other commissioners have any questions for Mr. Fauber? Or maybe anyone in the audience? Yep, or um, would anybody in the audience like to, do they have any questions? Do you have any questions? Yeah. How many businesses are they going to put in? That, 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 that. Not, I mean, not the, the coffee shop. I'm sorry again. <laughs> yeah, we're not having the. I mean, not the coffee shop, but the what do you call the uh, office, office buildings? Building. I mean, uh, you can give your name too. Kelly Moser. <laughs> yeah, how many? Well, how many of those they can figure on putting in? How many what? Office buildings. I'm I'm assuming. That there would be not more than one. It could be two. Could be two very small ones in there, depending on how that development might go. But I would say that it would. There's not room to put in. Okay. To there probably is not room to put in more than one. No, okay, dog. But they've got. Yeah, I just listened to all the things that can go under that. There could be anything. I mean, them office buildings. I mean, uh, if what you know what you had, there could be many things go in that building. Right. Could go into an office building. Right. You grab off a whole bunch of uh, Some of those were for the B two, which would be the other parcel. Right. I mean, office has to be. Our role is different. Yeah, it can't be retail. I mean, it won't be able to be a retail property. Um, it would be. Yeah, it would have to be office. Um, and then another thing to keep in mind is just there's some businesses that aren't going to build in a, such a small location. You know what I in such a small building or um, I mean, I, I could see, you know, people are always looking for places to do like, you know, um, hair or massage or things like that, bakeries. Um, but I guess that might be retail unless you're unless you're just baking and then you know, having maybe internet orders or something. I don't know. I guess people can be creative, but. I don't think you can put bakeries or things like that that are, that are in, in, in yeah, RO. Not in, uh, yeah, not in the RO, in not RO. in the RO as it, but, as it is now. But you could, uh, but I believe that we could put in a beauty shop 
that could that could go in something like that. That's a service, that, right? That and, could, and that's yeah. covered underneath that. Uh, it's it's pretty limited, actually, when you get down to it. It's uh, I think that what you what you heard when Holly was speaking to it was mixing B the B two with the RO, and uh, you got a lot of information there that. Uh, that probably should have been delineated a little more carefully. But uh, yeah, I can go over it again if you want. Yeah. yeah. So, any other questions of me? Yeah. Oh. It just helps our commissioners on Zoom to hear. Yes, I'm Terry Stow, and actually the back of my property has got the grove, and I understand the way the survey is done there, it really would affect taking out a good portion of that. Is that correct, Charlie? Well, oh, you mean the, the grove on this property? Right. Uh, some of it would have to come out in order to build houses in there, but along the back, you you have the setbacks, so on the perimeter of it, probably not a lot taken out, probably just cleaned up so it looks better. But in the in there, you're going to have to create some building sites in order to to use it, no matter what it's built, no matter what is done with it. It's uh, yeah, that, yes. Yeah, yeah I, I understand that. I guess, um, you know, part of that concern is even when they put up the Hardys there, um, the contractor worked really well with us and they agreed to put up a very nice privacy fence between the business and our property. And we were very grateful for that accommodation. Um, I guess that is a big concern because it is a good buffer right now and the privacy is there. And once we start to get into commercial or townhomes or things like that. We'll have more traffic for sure. So that, that's a concern. And the other part of my question is that Third Street, if they're thinking about using that as another alternative access, right now that is so narrow. There is absolutely one-way traffic in and out and we have to wait continuously for garbage trucks, recyclable trucks, any um, FedEx, anything right now. It's a very dangerous intersection because there is no room. So that, that would be a major concern for all of us in that area. Yeah, that's why I said if that's developed that way, that it probably will have to be created into some one ways and uh, or some one way traffic. And it actually may even help that a little bit because it would give it, one way or the other, it'll either give you an access in or an, or an exit out that would, would keep traffic going one way and probably not bottle it up quite as bad. Um, and the city would review any plans for subdivision, you know, prior to anything like that happening. Yeah. So infrastructure would obviously be a big, in, big factor in what could be designed or what could end up in that area. Hi, I'm Kyle Keenan, 310 12th place. I have the same concerns she has. That road, we live on the corner. And let me also say Jacob Vela, who lives in the house I live in, is also against this. The road is very narrow, very narrow. And <clears throat> we don't, we already have enough traffic from our neighborhood and I share all the concerns uh, that my neighbors have here. And I think we also need to think about the impact on the entire city. When you're talking about 4th Street, it's not just about people backing out of their driveway. It's about all the people in the apartments down the road from me who don't have cars, who walk up to Quick Trip so only to get their groceries, and how much more traffic are we talking about so they don't get hit? Why hasn't Mr. Bodler sold the property as residential? What is the precedent for anything on the east side of 4th Street 
being changed from residential to commercial? When is the last time that happened? Do you have those answers? The, the, the bottlers, uh, the, oops, <laughs> an echo here of some sort. The, uh, the, the bottlers, of course, uh, uh, kind of held that property closely through their family for many, many years. That was, that's, that's the, that's the last of the, of the Bottler homestead, you know, up there. Uh, and, uh, you know, why didn't, it, why wasn't it sold for residential through the years? Because there's no market for it as residential. But there will be a market for townhouses? As, as townhouses, built as townhouses, and with a buffer on the fourth street side, that's, that's easy. Yes, I believe the townhouses will work back in there, in the back part of it, yes. At whose expense? What? Or will our taxes go up at whose expense? I'm sorry. Of, of life expense. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. It will cost us higher taxes and a quality of life standard, and you'll be endangering pedestrians who are trying to get the groceries because they don't have cars, and they walk up a quick trip. Yeah. But anything for the bothers. Um, I'm assuming Mr. Bother will not be affected by any of this, right? He lives in Phoenix. Where is he? Pardon? Can you not hear? Here. I can. That's no, okay. I. I <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. If you, you know, if either of you want to seat, be seated like the rest, you can. I have a microphone if you okay. want to use it. And before before we go too much farther, I, we were doing each individual until they were done. You know, so this last little bit was if someone had something specific to ask Charlie about the development. There's opportunities for each of you to also just come up and make your comments. And so I, I don't want to just get all jumbled so that w w this just goes on forever because there's no structure to it. I, I want Charlie, when he's done saying what he has to say, to have an opportunity to sit down so that someone else can then come up so that we can do this in a way that everyone, by the end of it, has said what they want to say. And it's not a back and forth, or you know, it shouldn't devolve into some sort of argument or, or a personal discussion about a family or a name or or, or whatever. Let's let's try to keep it to the proposal that's at hand, and and whether that makes sense. So, Charlie, I think as far as I can tell, if you want to have a seat, and then looks like was it Mr. Steffes? Yes. If you want to come up and just make your comment briefly. Maybe explain whatever's already been brought up from your perspective, and then we can get some of these neighbors to just make their their statements. Yeah, I just uh, I did want to expand on on the comment that that Mr. Favre talked about in in terms of of why it's not marketable as residential, and you know sometimes you 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 know I, I try to look at things in different lenses and. If, if that were to, to stay, you know, your traditional single family um, residential area from the lens of looking at it from the future buyer, uh, where the future buyer is now adjacent to some, some, some retail and, and potentially some office, uh, it, it just, that's the point where it doesn't make it marketable for, for those buyers and it doesn't make it marketable to make it residential. Uh, for single family homes. And so I think, I guess in, in you know, just offering my thoughts, um, I'm sure people can agree or disagree, but the proposal that Charlie's putting together does create a, a transitional space to get from, I understand the retail um, that I, you know, even I'm bringing in, uh, which is soft retail, but, the, but creating that transitional space um, where it is marketable to more of the buyers or or people that want to live in you know multifamily or townhomes 
uh, those types of things does create that. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's where I believe that um, it's a great plan um, to create that transitional area and, and it does stop any future, you know, major retail such as a very large gas station. It is on an exit of, a, of an interstate to where a large, you know, quick trips are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, quick stars and those types of things. I'm sure you've seen that um, to where they come in and create this big, bright, you know, fully developed retail area that, that you know, potentially down the road, if this property sits there longer and longer, it could, could, could be that. So that's another lens to look at it is what, what it could be um, down the road that, that could be even what I would say is, is not a better picture of what we're looking at today. So uh, just my thoughts, again, um, there's just different ways to looking at things and, and I'm just offering my opinion there. So thank you. I think this would be a good time to, to open it up to the individuals that are in um, here today um, to be able to speak. So before you start, please um, give us your name and your address. Chichi Mosier. My husband is Kelly, and we live at 1304 4, 4th Street Northwest. Been there since January of 96. And our property is adjacent to that being considered for rezoning. Um, we opposed the rezoning in 1999, 2018, and we do so again for the following reasons. There are many locations and empty buildings already zoned for commercial use available within Austin. Within Austin. Why not utilize these instead of cutting into residential property? 4th Street Northwest often has heavy traffic, making it difficult for current residents to enter and exit their driveway. It's also difficult for those coming on to 4th Street from 12th Place and 12th and 13th Avenues. <laughs> Due to almost constant traffic, customers driving to use Quick Trip, Hardee's, Burger King, or Subway already have difficulty entering or exiting these businesses. Adding more businesses would only increase the traffic flow and increase the problem. The former YMCA building is being developed into about 92 apartments. The shortest route for these people to shop at Hy-Vee, Walmart, Caribou Coffee, Runnings, Pizza Ranch, and other restaurants and stores in North Austin is to use 4th Street Northwest. This will add considerable traffic to the street. Pedestrians are often seen crossing 4th Street to do business on either side of the street. Crossing is dangerous now because of, the traffic, because of the traffic and would become even more so with added businesses. And I think it was mentioned that the townhomes, these people would also be crossing 4th Street. And then lastly, uh, rezoning this area for commercial usage would lessen the value of our property as well as that of our neighbors. Um, we hope that you will consider these reasons and others that are voiced by citizens who actually live in the neighborhood. And we invite you to come visit our area, talk to the businesses, residents, and experience what we do as we come and go from our homes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to hover right here. That's your property, right? Pardon me? This is your property up on the screen. If you can look, I got the arrow. Is this your? This is no, your arrow is on the coffee shop. Oh, the, oh your moving arrow. Yeah, arrow. The moving yes, arrow. that's ours. Okay. Hello. My name is Deborah Earl. I live at 1209 4th Street Northwest with my mom, Teresa Earl. Um, I'm also opposed for a lot of the same reasons just mentioned, along with the other thing I was going to bring up is, you know, when we're out even mowing our boulevard, we take our lives in our hands with the traffic that's out there now. I don't know how many times I've almost gotten hit by a, by a mirror from a car because they get so close they don't pay attention. And it's so busy. I've helped little children try to get across the street, stop traffic. I always say, 
oh, they're not going to hit an old lady. So I sometimes just walk out in the middle of the street to stop them from, from just crossing. It's just so busy, and all this is going to just add more and more to what's already there until, until maybe the traffic situation needs to be addressed before we add anything else onto that street. Just thought. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you. I did. Does anyone else wish to speak? I was just looking, did I see someone raise a hand or? Okay, no, okay. Okay. Commissioners, do you have any other questions? Yeah, Holly, has there been anything from the state of Minnesota uh, with the new bridge across uh, Interstate 90 and any other um, traffic control going into place with that new interchange? You're asking the wrong person. I am definitely not involved in that. Uh, <laughs> there is, there was a, a particular uh, design choice that council voted on, which would be a strong recommendation to MnDOT. Although ultimately, I believe they they can choose, but I I don't know enough about how the design would work to give you any really good information about that. I know that overall it was presented as better than the con current design. That all designs that were presented were would work better with the traffic flow. Um, than what we currently have, but I can't tell you how, you know, I guess I can't tell you how much improvement there would be. Does anyone else have any other questions? <clears throat> Would anyone like to make a motion either for or against the rezone? That would be a recommendation to council to approve or deny. Uh, and then it probably should be for each parcel since they're two separate zoning designations. So maybe we should focus on parcel A. Yeah, I think that do you, what do you think, Mr. Byron? Would that be a good idea just to do each parcel as its own motion or? Yeah, that would make some sense because it's actually really two actions. The rezoning the one parcel to an RO and the other parcel to a B2. I agree. So I think it just makes things cleaner to have two separate motions. Yeah, it would just be a suggestion, um, just simply a motion to approve or deny uh, the rezone from R1 to RO or from R1 to B2. And, and before you do that, I think it's important uh, for me to just refer us back to the criteria. Uh, oftentimes, um, there, there's a you know political aspect to this, I guess that that because people came to speak their mind, that is the the, the biggest and most important thing that we should think about. And so I'm not suggesting you should say yay or nay on this, but the criteria under the law, as far as what you should decide this issue based upon, you know, are in the backup material, and it and it talks about uh, how the proposed zoning classifications fit with the goals and policies and future land use comprehensive plan there's certainly criteria about the compatibility with with the uh, with the proposed zoning district and the uses 
that are in the surrounding areas and issues about infrastructure and uh, services and whether they're sufficient, um, whether there's going to be any detrimental impacts. So just, just referring you back to the list of considerations, it would be good for any this, uh, decision that you make to be based and grounded in that and not in the fact that there were more votes no tonight in the audience than maybe votes yes from the developer. I don't want you to get lost in that, and I don't want think, people to think that that's the basis for any decision. It should be based upon these criteria. This is Commissioner Lutz. I'm going <clears> to <throat> echo what the city attorney just said as far as the considerations. And for me, as I mentioned earlier, number three in the considerations includes traffic impacts. I still believe that's the biggest issue with this request. And because of that impact on traffic and the issues that that area already has with congestion and traffic for the residents that live nearby, I'm, uh, I'm prepared to make a motion to recommend to council to deny the request. But I, before that, I would like to hear more discussion from the other commissioners, if I could, please. Yeah, and I would echo that, Jay, and note that the there's some environmental impacts as well as far as noise pollution that would be um, part of that um, in the surrounding neighborhood. I'm also prepared to deny the recommendation as well for similar reasons and lack of clarity of uh, what would be proposed to go in that space uh, to accommodate all concerns. Jay, I completely agree with you. I think, I mean, 4th Street is crazy as it is. Just to throw another um, business or just more traffic there would make it very difficult or even more difficult than what it already currently is. Any other feedback from the commissioners? I'm in total agreement with Mr. Lutz and uh, number four with uh, compromising the health, safety, and welfare of the residents. I can have concerns with that, with the traffic. Okay, so are you making a formal motion, Commissioner? Are there any other comments from any other commissioners? I concur with uh, with the other commissioners that this is uh, uh, the traffic is is a big issue. Number four, um, the health and welfare of the residents. I concur with that. Yeah, if there's no further comments from the commissioners, I'm prepared to make a motion to recommend the council to deny the request for the rezoning. Uh, for me, for both parcels. I would second. Okay, so we will focus on parcel A. So a motion has been made by Commissioner Lutz and seconded by Commissioner Schrock to recommend to deny rezone to council. We'll do a roll call vote. Commissioner Lutz? Aye. Commissioner Klenner? Aye. Commissioner Lindbergh? Aye. Commissioner Norman? Aye. Commissioner Schrock? Aye. Commissioner Stewart? Aye. Commissioner Salas Ramirez? Aye. Okay. With the unanimous decision of aye, motion carries. So then we'll go ahead and we will focus on um, parcel B. Does uh, anyone want to make a motion? I think the motion was for both, wasn't okay. it, Mr. Lutz? 
Yeah, I'm, I was prepared to make it for both. Yeah. Okay. Do well, you think I we need two separate said, motions? I thought that's what you said before that you were prepared to to say no to both. I was. The chair required or requested that it be two. Yeah. All right. Do you want to go? Do you want to make a motion? Somebody else want to jump in here? If not, I'll also make a motion to recommend to council to deny the request for rezoning for parcel B as well. I'll second that motion. Okay. A motion has been made by Commissioner Lutz and seconded by Commissioner Lindbergh to recommend to deny rezone for parcel B to council. We'll go ahead and do a roll call vote. Commissioner Lutz? Aye. Commissioner Klinner? Aye. Commissioner Lindbergh? Commissioner Lindbergh? Did we lose them? It looks like it looks like we've lost. Aye. Them. Oh, there he is. Commissioner Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Commissioner Norman? Aye. Commissioner Schrock? Aye. Commissioner Stewart? Aye. Commissioner Salas Ramirez. Aye. With the unanimous decision of aye, motion carries. If no one else has any other comments, we'll take a motion to adjourn. Hold on just a second. Oh. Just for everyone's benefit, that was a recommendation of the council. The council will consider that at their regular meeting on Monday at 530. That's the 18th. Yeah, Monday the 18th of October at 5.30. So, oh, what's that? That's a, that's a public meeting as well? It's actually not a public meeting. It's just a, huh? no. Okay. Not public. I mean, as far but as the public be, can attend that The meeting. public can attend, yes. Thank you. Yes, it's open to the public to attend. And when is that? Monday the 18th at 5.30. Same place. Thank you. Uh, and then a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion's been made to adjourn by Commissioner Lutz and seconded by Jana Norman. We'll do a, a roll call vote. Commissioner Lutz. Aye. Commissioner Klenner. Aye. Commissioner Lindbergh. Aye. Commissioner Norman. Aye. Commissioner Schrock. Aye. Commissioner Stewart? Aye. Commissioner Salas Ramirez? Aye. With the unanimous vote of aye, motion carries. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.